sit down with you. Welcome back to Canada, by Thank the way. Thank you. It's been a while since we've seen you. We're talking about your shoes during the break. Those are, those are some shoes. Those are some shoes. Those are some shoes. I fall over wearing these. These aren't even real shoes, they're slippers. <laughs> so I can only imagine what I'm up to doing. Something I'm to work on. <laughs> yeah. It's part of the bigger you problem. You can try these on if you want. Uh, I don't think they fit. I think, I think my girlfriend would get kind of confused a little bit. Maybe next show. All right, how long Maybe is it coming? Show? Maybe next show. Uh, uh, we're here in celebration of Funhouse. We are. And what a celebration it is. What a fun house. Um, whenever an artist releases a record, it's kind of a state of the union. This is where I am right now, or this is where I was when I was writing the record emotionally and yes. personally. Where was that place for you? Oh boy, well sort of, that's why I call it Funhouse, because it's fun. I'm always having fun, because damn it. And, but it's also, Funhouse is sort of nothing is what it seems. And it's, it's like you, you buy the ticket, you'll probably go again, but that's scary. That kind of place. What was the point of realization for you where maybe you got to the point where you're like, well, maybe, you know, my life isn't what I thought it would be? Oh, very early on. Like two, three. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I got kicked out of a sandbox. That'll do it. <laughs> um, I, I only got to listen to the record yesterday I, in its entirety, and uh, one of the things that I noticed was the emotional landscape of the record mm -hmm. changes from song to song. Some Very songs much. are, you know, happy, sad, kind of confused. The ones that kind of shocked me, kind of following your career for the past couple of years, was there are some songs where you actually sound vulnerable, and that wasn't <laughs> something that, as you know, somebody who would listen to your records is used to hearing from you. I'm a petite tulip. <laughs> Has that side always been there, or...? <laughs> I've worked on it. Okay. Um, I, I used to just be pissed off at the world, now my anger is much more focused. Where was that anger focused, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Not at you, lucky boy. Thank God! I'm starting to sweat up here, it's getting hot in here. Um, I mean, obviously this record was written during an, you know, a time of emotional duress. It's a yes. very emotional record. Um, some songs, I mean, the majority of the record sounds like it's written about a breakup. Some of it. Not all of it. Okay. Some of it. Definitely. Absolutely. I'm useless when I'm happy. I, really? Yes. Useless. That, does that just go along with being an artist, or has it always been like that? I think it's part of being an artist, but it has always been like that. Okay. Um, frustration, anger, sadness, loneliness is sort of a human condition, and that's what I draw from. And. I don't know. It's sort of like group therapy, I guess. There's definitely heartbreak, um, vulnerability, but there's also debauchery and <laughs> insanity and sexiness. All of which very fast. All of which very fast. Um, I, I don't want to stay too much on, on the Carrie separation stuff, uh, but you know. But you want to know more. Well, I do. I do want to know a little bit more because you talk about it on the record. Um, <laughs> How have you guys been able to stay friends? My parents got divorced when I was really young, and a lot of my friends were confused when we'd go on family, you know, vacations together up until now. I mean, my, my parents still talk every day. Absolutely. And a lot of people were confused by that. Uh, how have you guys been able to maintain a friendship? Because he's in your new video. He is. He's so cute, right? It was very bittersweet. Everyone on the set was crying and we were laughing. Um, no one really gets us. No one got us when we were together, and they definitely don't get us anymore now that we're apart. Um, I think when you have an authentic connection and a friendship, that even though your roles change a little bit, I think that you can still figure out a way to love each other and be yummy. If there's history shared, and it's when you want to call that person up and say, remember when, um, no, you don't remember either. At least it's that same person. And you're like, is this? Okay. Right. Yeah. So then, I mean, if you have this phenomenal connection with somebody, yes. what didn't work in terms of a marriage scenario? Um, well, marriage, my heroes are like Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn and Tim Robbins and Susan Sarandon and people that wake up and choose every day to be together and not because they're obligated. I think marriage as an institution was something that made more sense when we lived to be about 40. <laughs> Actually, I heard Goldie Hawn say that. Actually, really? Yeah, I, I love her. I love her. Um, I don't know. I have no. I have m many more questions than I have answers. But all I know is that I'm in a really good place, and I'm really lucky 
blessed more more importantly and and it's good fodder for the songs so i'm glad i do what i do or else i would be clinically insane so you do feel like you have closure over the whole thing um closure is a is a moving thing it's um i don't have closure over the fact that i got kicked out of gymnastics when i was 12. <laughs> i still would like to speak to my coach why don't you? You could. <laughs> I don't believe closure is ever a final thing. There's always some one more thing you think of to say after the fact. Well, there's a track called Crystal Ball on the record which yes. kind of touches on that. Mm -hmm. Crystal Ball is about not being afraid of the future and of not really wanting to know. I'm kind of fearless. I can't wait to get hurt again. Mm -hmm. Thank you! <laughs> In past interviews, I've heard you, you know, talk about your relationship with your father. Sometimes it's, mm -hmm. you know, very up, sometimes it's very down, and I kind of wonder what that relationship has taught you in terms of conflict resolution. <laughs> Fight nice, because you have to actually talk to the person again. Very wise advice. That's what I've learned. Um, no, my dad is... It's funny, it's like you raise your kids to be outspoken and, and strong and assertive, and then they talk back to you and you don't like it. And you're like, wait, but you taught me that. You taught me to have my own opinions, and he says, yes, I taught you to have your own opinions, but to always agree with me. So. Um, Sounds like a dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, in So What, you talk about wanting to get into a fight. Did he teach you how to fight? I, I read somewhere. Yes. I heard this is one move he taught you how to do that would just disarm yeah. people. Is it yeah, the wrist the, thing? The wrist thing. Yeah, it's really easy. It's kind of boring. I heard he took that bodyguard once. He did. At my, at my first album release party, when I was... 19, um, the security guard at the VIP room wouldn't let him into the to my room, and he right. basically put him <laughs> down. And I came out, I was like, Dad, you really can't do that at my, you know, record release party. It's not kosher. Sounds like the complete opposite. Let of the man up. <laughs> and then we got into a fight at the uh, the American Music Awards. Him and I with some police officers. And then a, a letter actually went out from the record company saying we shouldn't travel together anymore. <laughs> I swear. Is he, is he in the building right now? Should no, I be he's, nervous? he's at home. With we're, his we're all safe? M16s, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not the only person who gets to ask the question the show is interacting. We've got an audience okay. question uh, from Jillian, I believe. Jillian. Hi. Hey, uh, hi. Um, if you were to rewrite any of your songs, which one would it be and what would you change about it? That's a good question. I mean, that is a really good question. I've never, ever, ever heard that before. Honestly, I'd probably rewrite all of them. <laughs> Every single one? Yeah, because I don't really take that much time. I just kind of write whatever comes out. If it doesn't happen in five minutes, then I'm over it. But the one line in So What, because everyone thinks I'm talking trash about Jessica Simpson, and I'm actually not, it's just that the syllables worked. I'm actually, I promise you, I'm being truthful. The waiter just took my table and gave it to Jessica Simpson. Right? But I was going to say, the pilot just took my private jet and gave it to Haley Duff. Wasn't, it didn't work, kind of, the same. But, I don't know. <laughs> so we went with Jessica. So we have something in common. What's we're, that? We're both a little lazy sometimes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we've got a webcam question uh, from Natalie in BC. Natalie? Hi. Hey, Natalie, how are you? Hi. I'm good, how are you? Not too bad. Uh, do you have a question for Pink? I do, Pink, you're, I'm like, your biggest new fan, I love you since I was like, in 2009, when you first came out. But, my question is, um, if you could switch lives with anybody, who would it be? If I could switch lives? With anybody, with anybody. who would it be? Carl Rove. You want to be Carl Rove? I would be Carl Rove, and I would make everything better, and I would resign, and throw myself off a building. <laughs> <laughs> Carl Rove is the uh, campaign manager for the Republicans in the United States of America. He launched a lot of the attack ads against John Kerry in 2004, the swift boating, and then he was yes, a guy the mastermind he's, uh, he's pretty good at what he does. 